<laughs> All right, um, I'm going to get started now. I'm Dr. Adelsheimer, and um, thank you for joining me tonight uh, for our live webinar. I will be sharing my screen, and I have a slide presentation um, that I'm going to go through. And at the end, I will take any and all questions, and I'll stick around to answer whatever questions everyone may have. Um, it's 7.04, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, again, um, please put your questions in the question and answer section, or um, at the end, uh, I will, again, answer any questions. So there's a question and answer section at the bottom of the Zoom call, and people can um, just put your questions in there. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen to start the presentation. All right, um, so we're gonna get started now. And uh, once again, I wanna thank everybody for joining uh, me tonight for our live webinar about our practice and a lot of the things that we do. The title of tonight's uh, webinar is How to Avoid Surgery and Reduce Pain. We're gonna be talking about regenerative medical treatments using your own platelets and stem cells. Uh, once again, I wanna introduce myself. I'm Dr. Mark Adelsheimer. I uh, did my undergraduate degree at Duke University. I went to medical school at the Medical College of Pennsylvania. I then did my residency in physical medicine and rehabilitation at Tufts University in Boston. I moved to Pittsburgh in 1996, and I've been practicing in Pittsburgh ever since. I'm actually born and raised in Pittsburgh. Um, and it was uh, easy for me to move back here and raise my children here. My spare time, I like to play a little golf. Uh, these are my two partners, Dr. Lieber in the middle and Dr. Sally on the right. Dr. Lieber and I have been together since I moved back to Pittsburgh. Uh, all three of us are Pittsburgh natives. All three of us are board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation. Dr. Lieber and I have advanced specialization in pain medicine and Dr. Sally in sports medicine. Um, we have various uh, office locations around the Pittsburgh area. Our main office is in the RDC Park area in Fox Chapel, and that is where um, the uh, procedures that we're gonna be talking about today are performed. But we do have some satellite locations where we see patients as well. So in this webinar, I'm gonna show you our three-step process, where we get the cells, how they work, um, what they can help, and then again, like I said, answer all your questions. So this is a brief overview or an agenda of tonight's talk. First, I'm going to talk about Regenex, which is a company that we are part of. I'm going to talk about different options. I'm going to talk about interventional orthopedics and the treatments that we do. Um, I'm going to spend some time talking about how Regenex is superior and different to other providers who are doing similar type of work. Um, we're going to talk specifically about who this is for, and some of the results that we have. So let's start the talk by talking about Regenex. Uh, Regenex is where orthopedic stem cells were invented. Um, it was founded in 2005 by Dr. Centeno and Dr. Schultz, who are also uh, physical medicine and rehabilitation uh, board certified physicians. Dr. Lieber and I have known them since 2005, and uh, you know, they are a national group of providers. There's uh, actually over 70 to date. Um, and Regenex Pittsburgh was actually one of the original places outside of Colorado um, where uh, stem cells uh, started. Um, every Regenex provider, whether you're going to Colorado or to Florida or California, are all board certified physicians. There are no physician extenders. That means no PAs, no nurse practitioners. We're all physicians and we're all qualified and trained to do these procedures. Um, so again, every Regenex provider has gone through extensive training in uh, interventional orthopedics, which I'm going to talk about, which is 
you know, separates us from other people who are doing these procedures. And again, we are all physicians and that's true for whether we're doing prolotherapy, PRP or stem cells. So Regenix is not a product, but it's a family of medical procedures. And again, uh, what we consider to be a new medical specialty, which is interventional orthopedics. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. So what is the goal of interventional orthopedics? Our goal is to use less invasive procedures to, to avoid the more invasive surgeries, number one, and number two, to let the body heal itself. So with our uh, procedures, people get better without having to undergo surgery. Um, surgical orthopedics will not be the dominant form of care in the 21st century. 95% of meniscal surgeries are actually proven to be not only not helpful, but harmful because they are removing the meniscus space, which is something that is needed. Research shows that by doing meniscal surgery, all you're doing is speeding up the onset of arthritis, in other words, causing more problems. So let's stop cutting things out, and instead, let's inject some agents that can help the body to heal itself, some of your own cells. So this is a little history of where orthopedics has been. In 2000, almost everything was done surgically. By 2015, this gap had bridged a little bit, but this is where the future lies, and we're getting closer to this day by day, meaning that about 67 to 75% of what is currently being done with surgery is going to be replaced with interventional orthopedics or injections. So again, we're representing a new medical specialty, which is uh, interventional orthopedics. Again, our goal is to be less invasive than the more invasive surgeries. These are some of the equipment that we use. There's an ultrasound machine and a fluoroscopy machine. Again, this is really important and critical to note because every injection that we do on every one of our patients is using image guidance, either ultrasound or x-rays. I have a couple of examples here showing a needle uh, going into a shoulder joint, and this is a dye going around the joint. This is done under x-ray. So if a, a doctor just was to stick a needle into the shoulder joint and not actually take a picture of it, it would be very, it would be impossible to know that they were actually in the correct location. This is another example of a knee comparing the damage on an MRI with where our needles are going under x-ray. Here's a picture of it, the x-ray showing the needles in the correct location. So we can see there's two needles in this patient, one that's actually in the joint, and there's a little bit of dye going in the joint. We also stuck a small needle into the bone to treat the bone marrow lesion that you see on this MRI picture. So we treat into the bone with our stem cells in addition to into the joint. Um, this is an example of an injection being done under ultrasound, and it's a little bit tougher to appreciate. Uh, ultrasound is a, takes years to learn how to do this stuff correctly, but this is the needle coming in, and what we're doing is putting solution around the median nerve, which is right here. This is for carpal tunnel syndrome. So we um, use ultrasound and x-ray when we're doing every single one of our injections in our office. So I'm going to talk next about the different types of treatments that we do and who they are indicated for. Um, I'm going to briefly talk about prolotherapy. Um, I'm going to spend more of our time talking about um, the PRP or platelet lysate procedures that we do, and also spending most of the time talking about the same day stem cell protocol. So let's start actually talking about PRP. Um, PRP is very common in the sports medicine community because platelets work extremely well to heal orthopedic injuries, especially um, tendon problems, ligament problems, strain strain injuries. They are incredibly common in the sports medicine community. Professional athletes are getting PRP all the time to help to heal their problem quicker and have them return to sport. A good example here in Pittsburgh was TJ Watt this year, hurt his pectoral muscle, was evaluated. Should he have it operated on? He decided not to, he had PRP. He was able to heal this quickly and he was able to get back to playing for the Steelers after four to six weeks, which in the past 
that would have required surgery and he probably would have been out for the entire season. So again, um, PRP is extremely helpful in speeding up the healing process, especially when you're dealing with more minor problems like tendon injuries and ligamentous problems. So we use platelets in two different ways in our practice. Let's go back to that one. Uh, so we use PRP again for the, the tendon ligament cartilage problems. And we also use something called platelet lysate, which is when we use, still use the platelets, but we lyse them um, or have them release all of their healing factors right away. And this works extremely well when we're treating nerve conditions. So the example that I showed before of treatment for carpal tunnel syndrome, that's a nerve condition. That is something that you would rather use a platelet lysate because when you lyse the platelets and have them release their healing enzymes immediately, it works significantly better on nerves. The other main place that we use a platelet lysate is when we're doing spinal injections, epidural injections. Most people have heard of epidural steroid injections and what we do are epidural platelet lysate injections because we are actually healing the nerve as opposed to just putting some steroid in there, which doesn't do anything to heal. It actually um, prevents the long-term healing from taking place. So this is the opposite of a steroid injection. Steroid injections are for short-term fix, but in the long run, they actually cause more harm than good. And that's really important to know and that's true whether you're talking about epidural steroid injections, whether you're talking about steroid injections into major joints like knees, hips, shoulders, elbows, wrists, or even uh, trigger point injections where people use steroids. Steroids definitely cause significant long-term problems. This is important to note, and this is showing the difference between the PRP that we get at Regenex versus PRP that you would get in an orthopedic office we have a better machine to spin blood down so we can get a bloodless or red blood cell free product. And you can see the difference. There are PRP that we inject into people is all concentrated platelets. There are no red cells. If you were to go to your orthopedic office and get PRP done, they do not have the technology. They do not have that, that we do. So you are going to get Yes, it'll be a PRP injection, but it's going to be a substandard or not as good of a product as what you would get at Regenex. We're able to concentrate our PRP 20 times quality. The bedside machines that are used in uh, orthopedic offices can only concentrate five to seven times. So it's a huge difference. And we know this because we used to have one of the old machines and now we have the Regenex machine where we've had it for the last 11 years and it makes our product better, which leads to better results for our patients. Next, I'm gonna talk about stem cells and why we use them and what they're all about. Um, so an adult stem cell is an undifferentiated cell that's held in reserve until it's, until it's needed to help initiate a repair response. So um, the nice part about a stem cell is the same cell can turn into multiple different types of cell. So if you were to take a stem cell and place it into ligament, that cell would turn into cells that would produce ligament. That same stem cell turn, placed into tendon would grow cells that would grow tendon. That same cell placed into bone will grow cells that will grow bone. So we're able to use the same cells to treat multiple different orthopedic issues. Again, we're only treating orthopedic problems with mesenchymal adult stem cells that come from you. Um, they orchestrate a repair response. They self-renewal. So the question I always get is, hey, if you take all my stem cells, I'm not going to have any left. That's absolutely untrue your body will replenish every stem cell that we take and inject somewhere else in your body um, within six to eight weeks. So patients can come back and get a second stem cell procedure down the road because they do self-renew. Um, they also help to provide new blood supply in the areas where they're placed. So again, at Regenex Pittsburgh, we're talking about adult, not embryonic, adult stem cells. These are autologous, meaning they come from you. Um, sorry, this keeps going forward. 
Uh, they're bone marrow derived. Um, we're not using adipose derived stem cells. All right, I'm gonna go forward. I don't know why this is doing this on its own. I'll try to slow this down. All right, so um, next we're gonna talk about what to expect uh, when you have a stem cell procedure. It's a three-step process. The first step is done with prolotherapy. Um, And prolotherapy is a solution we have on our shelf. Um, the purpose of the prolotherapy is to till the soil or to make things ripe and rich. So on, on the first day of the stem cell procedure, you do not need to get any bone or uh, bone marrow or, or blood. Um, that's the second day. Um, so the second day is first we do the uh, bone marrow harvest, and that's uh, what this cell, uh, what this slide is showing. And I actually have a video showing you how easy uh, this uh, bone marrow harvest is. So what we're doing is first we'll numb the skin, then we numb the uh, soft tissue and the bone, and then we stick a needle down into the bone and we pull out um, the bone marrow. That's where the stem cells live. Then later on, we will re-inject the uh, stem cells into the area that we're treating. So like I said, I do have this video. Uh, this was one of my patients and you can um, see how easy it is for me to, first I'm numbing up the uh, bone. I'm doing this under ultrasound. The ultrasound machine is behind me. I'm making sure my needle is in the correct location. and um, that's me numbing the bone, um, making it, that's uh, lidocaine. So I'm, I'm going in all different directions, making sure it's, it's uh, good and numb for the patient so they're not feeling anything. And pull that needle out. Sorry, the screen's a little wide here. Now I'm using, you can see this is just a needle that I'm using to get into the bone. First, I get it through the skin and soft tissue. I, I, I'm pushing it down. I'm watching now under ultrasound to make sure the needle is up against the correct area of the bone that I want to be in. I can see it right there on the screen behind me. And I'm moving it just to make sure it's in the correct location. I'm satisfied with the location. Then I usually use a small drill to get that needle in and I just, easily goes in. Then we um, pull the center of the needle out. I put a little bit of heparin in there to make sure that the, the marrow doesn't clot. And then I put on a larger syringe and then pull bone marrow out from inside the bone. And that's what's involved with the bone marrow extract. This is a part of the procedure that when I talk to patients, they're always a little bit reluctant to do. We have done over 3,000 of these in our practice. They're really no big deal. Um, the patient is awake and alert. They're not anesthetized for this part of the procedure because it is absolutely not necessary. Mostly what you feel is a pinch and a burn uh, from the skin, maybe a little burning um, when we numb the bone underneath, but you do not feel the needle into the bone um, nor anything uh, afterwards. So after we get the stem cells, then I'm going to place those. Well, first we take the bone marrow and take it to our lab. It takes the lab about um, an hour and a half to process bone marrow because bone marrow is about 95% other cells. As you saw, it looks like blood. Um, all we want is the stem cells. So we're gonna, it takes my uh, lab technician a while to process this, to centrifuge it, to manually extract the stem cells um, during which time our patients leave and go get breakfast or lunch, depending on what time of day they're there. But then that same day, because the stem cells are alive, we need to re-inject those stem cells into what we're treating, whether it's the knee, the shoulder, the hip, the, um, or another part of the body. That's all done on the same day. So that's the big day. That's day two of the stem cell injection. 
And then day three is usually two to four days later, and that's done with PRP. And the reason we put PRP in after our stem cells is PRP acts like a fertilizer to stem cells. So the analogy of the three steps is a prolotherapy or tilling the soil with the first step, um, planting the seeds with the stem cell injection, and then fertilizing the seeds with the PRP. After the, the PRP injection, truthfully, you don't need to come back to our practice. Every follow-up can be done um, via video. We have patients that come from up to six to eight hours away. They travel all the way to us just to have these procedures done. We've had patients from Toronto, from Rochester, New York, um, from all over Ohio, West Virginia, from Eastern Pennsylvania. And obviously they're not gonna uh, need to do all their rehab in Pittsburgh. So we will give you a rehab protocol to take to your local um, physical therapist because it's important that you go to therapy after a stem cell procedure to maximize the improvement from the process. So um, the first thing before we talk about, you know, what type of patients or what type of conditions we treat, I always emphasize the safeness of this procedure. It is extremely safe, especially if you're comparing this to surgery. First of all, everything that we do is done right in our office. Um, so you don't need to go to a hospital. Bad things happen in hospitals. People die, infections happen blood clots, nerve damage, cancer, all these things can happen when you undergoing surgery. We've never had any complication. We've also never had an infection uh, with any of the patients uh, in our office. Everything is done sterilely and everything is done guided. I know I've said that a few times, but I really emphasize that, that we are experts in placing our needles in the correct location. I promise you, if you are go to another clinic, that says they're doing stem cells or doing regenerative work, they do not have the training and the expertise to make sure they are placing your cells in the correct location. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that later on, but I do emphasize that because that is really one of the key factors to make us um, superior to other people in this field. So what areas of the body is Regenex for? I'm going to talk about just kind of the main four areas that we treat, but we basically treat every orthopedic condition. So in addition to the main four areas, we also treat things like wrists, elbows, ankles, toes, uh, thumbs, fingers, you know, joint, basically any orthopedic area. But the main uh, areas that we treat are knees, shoulders, hips, and spine. Um, the knee being the most common joint that we treat with stem cells. And the reason is because stem cells are a home run in knee problems, especially bone on bone and stage arthritis. I need a knee replacement tomorrow and come to our practice, undergo a stem cell procedure and, and not only not, under, not have a knee replacement, but get significant improvement to the point where they can hike, bike, play golf, um, play tennis, run, height, you know, be active. Um, again, uh, knee osteoarthritis is the number one condition we treat. And even if it's end stage bone on bone, even if you're elderly, we've done a 98 year old gentleman in our practice. Even if you're obese, you know, that's not a problem. We have, you know, some patients have gone to see an orthopedic surgeon and they say they're too obese to have surgery. They've come to our practice. They've had a stem cell procedure. They've never had the surgery. Um, the success rate for knee osteoarthritis is about 95 to 98%. And on average, people see about a 66 or 67% improvement, meaning that they get about two thirds better, which is significant. Um, it's not just a little bit better, it's a lot better. Other conditions in the knee that we treat are torn meniscus. Um, often, if, it, if you just have a meniscal tear, uh, we will use PRP. Most people with osteoarthritis also have torn menisci. They kind of always go hand in hand. So uh, we will treat both at the same time. And we also treat ACL tears, especially in young athletes. I mean, we've done a lot of high school uh, athletes who tear their ACL and instead of undergoing ACL reconstructive surgery, have come to our practice, had a stem cell procedure, 
and have gone back to playing high level sports, including professional athletes that have gone back to playing professional sports. I've got a couple pictures of some knee patients that we treat and one's a little case study. This is Pam, she's a 58 year old aerobics instructor. She had four years of severe right knee pain. Her MRI shows grade four chondrosis. Grade four is the worst. Um, that's bone on bone arthritis. Her pain was a six to eight out of 10. She wasn't working. She was an aerobic instructor. She wasn't able to work. She wasn't able to enjoy her life. She underwent a stem cell procedure. And three months later, she was back to full duty work, including aerobics, yoga, Pilates, plyometrics. And she graded her improvement at 85 to 90%. So um, her and her MRI improved as well. Her arthritis changed from grade four to grade three. This is an example of an ACL that we treated. Here's a torn ACL that I'm pointing to here. After a stem cell procedure, this is what a good black ACL should look like, much like the PCL looks here. But here you can see the difference. And again, we have done multiple, especially younger athletes, because younger athletes are, tend to be the ones who tear their ACL. Um, moving on to the shoulder, that's probably the second most common joint that we treat. We treat um, most major conditions in the shoulder, including rotator cuff tears, labral tears, uh, and arthritis, as well as tendonitis. Um, rotator cuff tears can be treated successfully with a stem cell procedure, as long as that tear is less than 1.5 centimeters. And um, we can see that on your MRI. So when you come to see us, we'll take a look at your MRI. We'll evaluate the tear and determine whether or not this is something that we can treat with stem cells. Uh, slap lesions or labral tears respond very well to regenerative treatment. Sometimes it can just be PRP or stem cells, depending on the extent of it. And then arthritis of the shoulder is a very common problem that, um, again, much like the knee, can respond very well to a stem cell procedure. Here's an MRI picture of someone with a torn rotator cuff. The error is already here. All this inflammation is around a tear. Uh, this was post stem cell procedure. The rotator cuff is now back and intact. Um, hips uh, are the third most common joint that we treat. Hips, you have to be a little bit more careful. As I said, home, uh, these are home runs, even for end stage bone on bone uh, arthritis. It's not quite the same in hips, unfortunately. We've done a lot of we've done a lot of treatment, have a lot of data on hips, and if you have severe end stage bone on bone arthritis, you're probably not going to respond well to a stem cell procedure. However, if you have moderate osteoarthritis, or if you have a labral tear or a vascular necrosis, hips um, respond extremely well. So the bottom line, if you have hip problems, it's a little better to get in earlier because if it waits until your end stage, you're probably not going to be a candidate for a stem cell procedure. But for good patients, again, 75% of patients have returned to sporting activities, including golf, including running. Um, they do very well. This is an example of a needle going into the bone for someone who has avascular necrosis or part of the hip bone that dies. So as I showed another picture earlier, we can stick needles down into the bone and place stem cells directly into the bone to help heal from inside out. And that's what this is uh, demonstrating. So the other area that we treat very commonly are spinal conditions. So whether it's uh, sciatica, painful herniated disc, cassette mediated pain, spinal stenosis, sacroiliac pain, ligament pain, or after surgery, we have great options for spinal problems. As I mentioned earlier, we have, instead of doing epidural steroid injections, we will do an epidural platelet injection, um, which does not have the steroid side effects and leads to healing of uh, the nerve. This is a slide showing the difference between an epidural steroid injection and an epidural platelet lysate injection. Basically, at three months, most epidural steroid injections, the effects have worn off, and by six months, they're pretty much gone, whereas the platelet injections can last not only for months, but for years. 
and they can be repeated in people who, if the pain comes back um, with nerve problems. Um, so I'm gonna briefly talk about how Regenex compares to some of the other people who are doing quote stem cell procedures because they're really not stem cell procedures that they're doing. I'll talk a little bit about some of the differences. So a lot of clinics are using amniotic cells or um, cord blood from a pregnant woman. And independent laboratories have tested this material and there are no stem cells in it. Basically what they're doing is sticking a needle into a pregnant woman's um, amniotic sac, say, taking some of that fluid, freezing it, sending it across the country. Someone has to thaw it out. Then they place it into a syringe. They've tested it. There's no live cells. Um, yet they're claiming that this actually is a stem cell procedure. So it's basically fraud, um, buyer beware. And this is just showing the differences between what real stem cells are versus these amniotic or cord blood cells. Also, these are usually done in a chiropractor's office or and often usually with no guidance, as I mentioned before, we only do guided procedures. They're often done by a PA or a nurse. Literally a physician assistant can go take a weekend course, say, and, and learn how to stick a needle into a knee, put some amniotic fluid in it and charge someone thousands of dollars for a quote stem cell procedure that really will do absolutely nothing for the patient. So again, their costs are significant, but the results, they don't have any results. They have no data to help to support any of the procedures that they're doing. Um, the FDA is also now uh, looking at fat as a source of stem cells. And that's why, again, we don't use fat at all in our, in our um, treatments. Uh, they did send out a letter saying a cease and desist for people that are using fat. Um, also, there has been a lot of studies comparing fat versus bone marrow and bone marrow actually far outperforms fat in general as a source of stem cells. So there's 10 to 20 times more stem cells per unit volume in bone marrow than there is in fat. It actually hurts more to do a fat procedure than a bone marrow procedure. And I know that because when we first started doing this, we were doing both and quickly realized that the fat procedures were not nearly as uh, successful, and then as more research came out, everything heavily favored bone marrow. So again, bone marrow is all that we do in our practice. People say, are they, my stem cells are too old. As I stated earlier, that's absolutely not true. Your stem cells continue to self-renew during your entire life. So the stem cells that you have now were not the stem cells that you were born with. Your body replenishes stem cells about every six to eight weeks. So older patients do not perform any worse than younger patients with stem cell procedures. As I mentioned, we've done you know, multiple patients in their 80s and 90s that have uh, done extremely well with our treatment. So what's the downside? The downside is that for most of the treatment, for most insurances, it's not covered. What is covered, however, is a consultation with our practice. So my main message for people tonight is I'm not gonna be able to answer all your individual questions tonight. I highly recommend that you call my practice, you make an appointment, you see myself, you see Dr. Lieber, you see Dr. Sally, one of us in one of our office locations. Um, the consultation will be built for your insurance just like any other um, consultation that you get when you see any physician. Um, that is 100% covered, and we will go over with you what um, our recommendations are. We don't only do regenerative treatments. We do a lot of other things in our practice, including um, therapies, and, you know, and we have multiple other options. So again, um, if, we, if it's not going to be a, a regenerative procedure that we're recommending, we have other things that we can talk to you about. The other thing to keep in mind is even though um, the insurance companies don't cover the procedures. When you look at um, your out-of-pocket expenses for knee surgery, for instance, you're probably going to end up spending more than what a uh, Regenex procedure would cost um, because of deductibles, co-insurances, therapy, and more importantly, time off of work. 
With our procedure, you were back to work in two days. With a knee replacement, you can be out three months. Huge difference. So again, depending on what we do, the costs you know can fall anywhere in these ranges. Um, you know, we have people in our practice that can tell you about that when you come in uh, to discuss costs. So in conclusion, uh, just in terms of Regenex, it's not magic pixie dust stem cells, it's advanced, precise, safe, interventional orthopedics. Regenex has been doing this longer than anyone else in the United States. They have more treatment options. Very importantly, we have published an online registry, which nobody else has, and we have more data to support what we're doing. We have published multiple articles in peer review literature um, where other practices or other um, types of treatments do not have that. And then what we learn from our uh, resources, and then we change and make uh, everything better to make our procedures better for you. So how do I get started? As I just said, schedule an appointment. Um, again, the one thing I promise you is that myself, Dr. Lieber or Dr. Sally will give you a full comprehensive history and physical, and we will go over and give you an honest opinion as to whether or not you are a candidate. If you have, uh, an MRI or an X-ray, please bring those to the appointment. If you don't and we feel it's necessary, don't worry about it, we can order it. So again, we will give you a honest opinion um, and then it's up to you to make a decision whether or not you would wanna go forward. So this is our call center. That's our, our, our office number. Please give us a call, 412-963-6480 and and um, schedule an appointment. And again, I will be happy to give you an honest opinion of that appointment. Like I said, I will answer some questions tonight, but again, I can't go into detail about your individual problem without spending time with you in the office, examining you and doing everything that's necessary. So with that, I'm going to uh, end the slideshow and uh, answer questions. I see there are some questions uh, already here and you know, please go ahead and uh, type out other questions um, for me. Um, and I will, let's start with uh, this one. It says, I had uh, surgery on my foot for a bunion. The bone never fused properly, so it had to be redone. Boom, my foot is restricted and painful. I have to wear a shoe. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm unable to wear a shoe for any length of time. My foot swells up afterwards and then it's more painful. I told the problem is internal scar tissue. I have found no relief. Would the platelet injection relieve the pain and provide better movement? It's a tough question. I, you know, Again, it's going to be hard for me to answer that tonight other than saying we have treated this problem um, multiple times in our practice. So again, um, we've treated a lot of people that have had uh, scar tissue that have reduced motion. You know, I have to see what your x-ray looks like. I have to examine your foot to really give you an honest opinion how well uh, our procedure would help you. But I would definitely recommend coming in. Um, you know, it's not, uh, it's not something that I could Tell you tonight without spending time doing an examination. Moving down, um, there was a slide that said no infections and nerve damage from procedures. What type of procedure, body parts does this relate? That's all of our procedures. I mean, again, that's why we do these things sterilely. That's why we do them under uh, x ray and ultrasound guidance. When you're blindly sticking needles into patients, you can cause nerve damage. You can stick a needle into the wrong place. We have advanced training. Um, doc, you know, I have personally done over 30,000 uh, fluoroscopically guided procedures. I've done over 10,000 ultrasound guided procedures. Dr. Lieber and Dr. Sally have done equal numbers. So we have done thousands and thousands of these procedures all under guidance to make sure that these are safe. And that's, again, the first thing that I recommend. Um, what would it be for the spine? Um, oftentimes, you know, I did talk, you know, about the spine a little bit, but usually when we're treating spinal problems, 
Um, the uh, treatment is not just one location. Like if you go to a pain physician and you get an epidural steroid injection and they bill it, and they bill it through your insurance, they can only hit one spot at a time. Otherwise, the insurance won't pay for it. So we do more of a comprehensive or global approach where we'll stick needles not only into the epidural space, but also into the facet joints and into the ligaments that help to support the spine, also into the muscles, occasionally into the disc. So um, spinal problems are something we have been treating for a long time. They're, you know, one of the main things that we treat and everyone is going to get an individual uh, treatment, but uh, usually we're talking platelet procedures for the spine, um, mainly because platelets work better than, um, than uh, stem cells in the spine. Okay, moving on. Next question. Do you treat plantar fasciitis? Yes, absolutely. Did it yesterday. Um, done multiple uh, problems with plantar fasciitis. PRP works great for uh, this problem. Um, you know, I definitely recommend starting with physical therapy, um, you know, conservative treatment, but, it, you know, maybe wearing some, you know, some boot at night. But PRP, if this is something that's been bothering you for more than three months, PRP is the way to go for plantar fasciitis. Um, next question, uh, what proof does Regenix have that your PRP or stem cell procedures are effective? Again, we have a, a registry and data that we've collected not only on our patients in Pittsburgh, but from Regenix across the country. So again, as I mentioned, we have done you know, in our own practice, probably um, 30,000 patients or so, those get pulled into the national database of 70 providers. So we're talking about hundreds of thousands to millions of patients that have um, not only uh, talk about their treatment, but also their results. So we have, you know, data that supports the treatments that we've done. There's also been some peer review data, including um, data showing a five-year relief from stem cell procedures that was placed into um, various medical journals. Regenix has published more data than any other providers on um, regenerative medicine. So I highly recommend going to the Regenix website. There is links for all of the research that have been done. And I would, uh, you know, that's a great place to start. We can give you more information when you come into the practice. Next question, why are offshore treatment at higher levels than in the States? Um, the main reason that offshore treatments, um, what they can do is they can do um, cultured stem cells where those are illegal in the United States. And I, I assume that's what you're talking about. So we do, as I mentioned, a same day stem cell procedure where we take your bone marrow out and we put it, your stem cells right back in the same day. A cultured procedure is if you were to take those cells and grow them in a culture medium and um, expand those to you know, 20 to 50 to 100 times the number of cells. That's illegal in the United States. The FDA has ruled on that. It's, they, they say it's considered a drug and there are, there are offshore clinics that do uh, those type of treatments. And they're much more expensive. Uh, Regenix has a office in the Caymans where they do these things for people that may have, say, five joints or something that they want to treat. Um, obviously, you have to uh, go to the Cayman Islands to have this done, which can be great, but it, the expense is uh, significantly more. Next question Can you evaluate for bone on bone knee without an MRI? Yes. Yes, you don't always need an MRI, especially for bone on bone knees. Uh, we will examine your knee with ultrasound in the office and combine that with your x ray. And often that's all that's necessary, especially for knees. When we're talking the spine, we generally want an MRI. Um, other joints, it depends on what we're, what we're looking at. Um, next question the effectiveness is discussed for the knee, shoulder, hip, but what about the spine? Uh, again, uh, a bulging disc. I mean, this is extremely uh, effective for spinal conditions. I have, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, we probably treat uh, 
five to 10 spinal patients a week. Um, and um, the results are very similar to what you're seeing with stem cells for the, for the knee and the shoulder. Um, about a 70% improvement that are lasting for, you know, um, a year to five years, um, depending on what condition we're treating. Uh, next question, can you have Regenex knee procedure if you've had a knee replacement? Unfortunately, no. Once the knee is replaced, we can't go back in there and put, well, we can, but it's not going to help because stem cells work to restore your body parts. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, and, uh, you know, this is not the last step. You know, you can always have a stem cell procedure after a, I mean, always have a knee replacement after a stem cell procedure, but you can't go the other way. So people who are thinking about a knee replacement, but don't want to have that surgery, this is probably your only viable alternative to knee replacement surgery. Okay, um, I think I've answered all the questions that I have for tonight. And it's, um, if there aren't any more questions, I once again want to thank everybody for joining me. I'm going to uh, stop sharing my screen and um, All right. Well, once again, I want to thank everyone for joining me tonight and uh, have a great night. And we hope to see you at our practice again. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye bye.